kind of seen the most, you know, growth and progression uh, from Hunter really since December or January? And where would you maybe like to see a little bit more of that as we kind of get closer to, you know, fall camp and such? Yeah, it's been fun to work with him these last uh, few weeks, especially in spring ball. Um, you know, he's he's got a lot of really good reps under his belt, and and it's it's fun to go back and watch the film from last year um, because he's able to talk through, you know, what he saw, decisions he made, um, you know, reasons why he went, uh, you know, to certain spots on the field, and really just to be able to dial back into to what we're trying to do, how we're trying to execute. Um, some of the tweaks and changes that, that we've made, and, and honestly, to get out there on the field and get reps. It's, it's one thing to theorize about things all off offseason. Um, the blessing of spring ball is you get to put those things into action and, and start to see some of those results on the field. Um, you know, start to see if things that, uh, you know, you may have tweaked from last year make sense. And, uh, you know, he, he's responded well to that. Thank you. Nate, it's Randy um, at the register. What kind of is – is he being pushed hard? I mean, obviously last year I, he probably wasn't, but is he being he being pushed hard by by Rocco and and maybe even JJ? Yeah, it's been a really competitive spring uh, overall. I think from position to position, you've had guys, you've had young guys that have been chomping at the bit, and it's no different in the quarterback room. Um, I think the experience that Rocco had, you know, even going through last season, um, the reps that he got in game, in practice, um, you, you've seen a lot of growth from him. Uh, you've seen his maturity, even even in the last few practice, uh, you know, he, he's made a lot of huge strides in in understanding the offense and in making throws and in great de decision making, uh, even throughout the course of a practice. So, you know, that's good to see that consistency. And then obviously JJ coming in, um, you, you've got a guy that's, uh, you know, obviously he's really talented, but he really, really cares about football. That's the part that stands out to him um, or, or since working with him is that, man, he's passionate. He wants to be uh, in the film room as much as he can. He wants to get extra reps behind the scenes and, um, you know, guys like that, that that's, that's the type of competitive spirit that you want uh, from a position group, from an offense in general, from a team overall. And so we've got that from those guys. Uh, those guys have all pushed each other, um, you know, forced each other to, to get better every day that they're out there and, and really be dialed in. Does, um, does Hunter have to be good? Yes. Have to be successful, right? Yeah, I know that. Okay. Right off, right off from the start. Yeah. Um, because I know last year they – Tommy and, and, and Matt had gave him some, some rope just because, I mean, gosh, following, following Brock. Is that rope getting real, getting shorter this year? Uh, no, I'm not a shortened rope type of guy. I, I, I want those guys, whoever's out there, to be completely confident in, in you know, what they're doing. Um, the, the rope is tight when it comes to decision making for all those guys at, at all points. And um, that's going to be something that we emphasize you know, in practice, um, you know, in in the meeting room, um, as we get into the season next season, uh, that, that's going to be a part of playing quarterback, that they're expected to be on it when it comes to decision making. Um, and, and so that's something that they've all had to had to do. And, and when it's not been up to the standard of what we wanted, um, you know, they know that that's not acceptable. So uh, I, I don't, but that being said, when you know when we hit September uh, next season and, and those guys run out there, you know, and again that goes for the quarterback, that goes for the starting the right guard, that goes for the starting slot receiver. We want those guys to be confident in what they're doing, um, and and again they've earned the right to be out there for us. And so it's not always going to be perfect. Um, there there may be a rep or two that that you know we want to look different, and and we want them to be confident that that they can go and make the next play. So I, I think there's a little bit of both there. Um, but yeah, I'm 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 not the type that's that's man. I'm gonna have them out there playing tight or, or worried about uh, you know what's over their shoulder. I want them going to executing and, and making great decisions throughout the course of you know a game and a season. And speaking of shoulder, how's Hunter doing from the shoulder that he hurt after whatever it was in the TCU game? Yeah, it's been good. Honestly, we haven't talked about it since uh, since early January, so that's a positive thing. Uh, it hasn't caused any issues as he's gotten into things this spring, um, which is encouraging. And, uh, you know, I think that was the expectation. Our training staff did a great job with him this offseason to get him ready, but he wasn't limited at all by the time he got back here and, and got into the weight room. Okie doke. Thank you. No problem. Hey, Nate, it's Bill at, at Cyclone Reports. I realize you're not uh... – directly overseeing this position anymore but uh now that you're the coordinator uh running back how how does that look this spring through what five or six practices uh what are you getting out of gyrell what are you getting out of 
Cartavius? Are we going to see those guys much in the spring game? And then kind of go through the rest of that uh, group. Yeah, I think, you know, if you fast forward to the spring game, um, you know, that's a unique position. And, and those guys, obviously, man, all of them ha have had some, you know, just, just wear and tear from playing in a season. And so we'll be smart about how we manage those guys and, and the amount of, you know, live reps they get. Um, you know, but that being said, uh, n number one, I would say those guys uh, really dialed in this offseason to the weight room. And uh, you've seen those guys transform their bodies. You've seen them really uh, amp up the nutrition and um, just get themselves ready to go. I think sometimes, you know, it, it, it's one thing to think, man, I want to go and be the guy and I want to go and have this, uh, you know, this incredible breakout season. And, and there's another thing when you get a ton of those reps and, and what that really feels like playing the running back position. So I think that they've, you know, they've all felt that in, in some moments, um, Cartavius, Jarrell, Eli, and, and, and I think they have more urgency to get their bodies ready, to get themselves ready for this season. So um, our, our strength staff has done a great job. Our training staff has done a great job of, of working with those guys. And, you know, what, what we've seen so far is, man, you've got all those guys and they're, they're all a little bit different. Um, but I think the positive part for us is they all have a level of physicality that they bring to the table. Um, they have the ability to make explosive plays, which we want from our running backs. And, and I'm really excited to see those guys continue to grow again. And that starts in the weight room with, with those guys and, and preparing themselves. But, um, you know, I think what I've seen on the field from those guys is, is they've got the ability to, um, to go and be explosive runners for us and playmakers for us um, because we're going to need them to do that come season. Hi, hi, Nate. It's Rob Gray with the Cedar Rapids Gazette. How are you? Good. How are you doing, Rob? Doing great. Uh, thanks, as always, for your time. Um, wanted to ask, I, when you – first met us after being elevated to the offensive coordinator, you talked about how exciting it was working with the new guys, kind of game planning, I guess, behind the scenes, and obviously Taylor's still there. How has that dynamic uh, changed now that you're pract you know, coaching practices together and maybe been enhanced just in terms of your kind of connectivity as a staff? Yeah, it's, it's uh, again, it's been a huge pos positive to get into practice because Again, you can get away from theorizing about things and, and man, we, we can do this or, man, we should do this. And you actually get some reps to see uh, what are we good at and, and what are the things that uh, fit us and fit our players. And, and you can really start uh, figuring that out as an offense. And I think it's it's been cool to have – um, guys with different experiences come into the fold um, that, that obviously have different ideas, but but even just, man, their ability to teach, uh, their ability to coach, um, man, maybe they see things that, that man, I, I've never really realized or, or things that, you know, Coach Mauser, um, man, we, we've had a different take on it. And so they've been able to add, um, you know, j just a different experience to the fold, which, which has been huge for us. And then, um, you know, th those guys are, are, again, they're great, great teachers uh, who care about the kids that they coach a ton. And you've, you've seen them light a fire, I think, from position to position, um, just in the group overall and how they're attacking it, the tenacity that each group is bringing to the table, um, as well as the precision and detail um, with, with what their position is expected to do and the techniques and fundamentals it'll take to be successful. And so it's been a lot of fun to get out on the field, um, to get back in a meeting room after practice, to go over stuff and figure out exactly, man, what, what fits our guys and, and where we're moving as far as the direction of the offense. But um, I've been fired up about it. and. And again, I've been fired up from a football standpoint, but uh, I think I said it back then, and, and I probably feel even more strong about it now that um, who they are as men and, and what they brought to the table as far as like um, how they coach our kids, uh, the, the, the type of, um, yeah, just, just the type of men they are, uh, who they are as family men, as, as husbands, as fathers. Um, it, it's been inspiring just to be around um, as a fellow coach, to be honest with you. Thanks, man. Hey, Nate, it's Hines. How are you? Great. I'm doing awesome. Curious, I mean, obviously with Jirel the last couple of months, but even going further back as he dealt with, it seemed like a, a long list of injuries, what you've seen from him and trying to, to navigate that over the last, you know, six, eight months or whatever it's been. Yeah, he's, uh, man, it, it, it's hard to go through adversity like that. And, you know, to have your season end in a way um, where you're, you're expecting to play, um, all of the games and he he did such a great job for us as he went along and I think that was a frustrating uh, season to go through obviously just in general for us um, you know as a team but I think for him specifically where he felt like when he was at his best and he was healthy he made a ton of plays for us and um, not to be out there not to be able to make plays in some of those 
tough moments and critical moments. I mean, shoot, he, he goes out making a huge play for us, um, you know, crossing the goal line, scoring a touchdown against Oklahoma State. And, um, you know, I, I think that's tough for anybody to deal with. But I, I've seen some great resolve from him. Um, you know, like I said, that that came first in the training room. It came first in the weight room and, and, and really just, man, working his tail off to be healthy and be available come spring, you know, and, and, and obviously getting him out there and getting reps from him. Uh, it's been huge. But, um, man, I, I honestly, I feel like even watching him uh, this, this past Saturday, he made a couple of plays that I felt like, man, he's, he's, he looks light on his feet. Um, you know, he's making defenders miss at the second level, uh, which is good to see. You know, anytime you're coming off of a, a lower body injury at running back, you're always worried about, man, do you still have that kind of it factor uh, to make guys miss and, and, and to create explosive runs. But to see that from him, um, even this early on, has been encouraging for just the progression he'll have even as this offseason grows. I'm curious for you, with the, what's the dynamic as the offensive coordinator and the, the quarterback's coach? What do you, how do you approach that, you know, from – globally and then dialing in with those guys in the, the position room? Yeah, I think it's uh, – man, I think it's been a huge positive and, and it's probably one I didn't even anticipate early on. But, um, you know, I think at any level of football, uh, the, the offense in, in a lot of ways uh, can only go as far as the, the quarterback is, is ready to, to take it. And I think being able to dial in with those guys and, and understand where they're at, to understand, um, you know, what they like, what they feel confident in, um, man, the, the install and, and how fast or slow we're going just based on those guys and what they can pick up, um, I think has been really, really cool. It's, it's, it's important, obviously, for, for the coordinator to understand those guys and just being able to meet with them daily, um, being able to get the feedback from them in the meeting room uh, ha has been huge. And so um, I've enjoyed it a lot. I've enjoyed, you know, getting to know those guys. Uh, you know, on a personal level, number one, uh, but just coaching them and, and figuring out uh, what they do well, what they like, um, you know, what they feel confident in out on the field. Uh, it's been really cool for me. Is there anything you do differently with that group than you did with the wide receivers or the running backs, or is it mostly the same, just a different position? Uh, no, everything I would say is different. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's different coaching that crew. And, that, you know, we had a conversation about this early on in, in, in spring and, um, the expectations and the standards, uh, they got to start in that room. And, you know, for our offense to be together, that room has to be together. And so that, that was a starting point for us as a, as a group. Um, you know, our offense will only go as far as, as, as those guys are willing to, to take it. And that's the level of, you know, tenacity that they approach the meeting room with. That's the way that they approach the practice field. Um, that's their care and their belief about how we do things. Um, not just the, the fact that we got schemes and plays, but um, that, that there's a certain level of precision that it takes to be good on offense. And yeah, we want to create explosive plays and yeah, we want to be physical in the run game, but those guys got to be the ones that, that keep us moving down the field. Those guys got to be the one that are most dialed into uh, what the situation is um, within a series, within a game. And so uh, there's, there's just, there's so much that they have to be aware of. Whereas, man, if, if I'm playing a different position, I got to be locked into my technique. I got to be locked into the execution of a play. But um, yeah, just the big picture awareness of those guys uh, on the field is, is critical to our success. And so it's been really cool to just spend time in the meeting room talking about those things. Again, it's not just, hey, take a three-step drop and throw it here. Um, but man, what's the situation in the game? Man, what are we trying to do here? It's second and short. What are we thinking? Hey, it's second and long. What are we thinking? Hey, this is a call on third down when we cross the 50. Why would we be thinking that? And so um, I think those parts have been really cool for me just to um, get with those guys on. And, and, you know, they're football junkies, so so they, they enjoy eating that part of the game up as well. Is that like the perfect two-way synergy for them to, to be in constant dialogue with the offensive coordinator and their position coach where it's just you guys are – seeing the big picture all together, you know, 24 seven, basically. I think it's important. I, I know there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat, um, but, I, but I felt like that has been a, uh, a huge positive start for us this off season and, and just being able to understand those guys more and spend a lot of time with them. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of things that help an offense uh, and there's a lot of different ways to do it, but that's for sure, I, I think, been a benefit for us this off season. Appreciate it, Nate. Yep. We got time for about one more. It's Randy. Um, what does what does Hunter have to do to cut down on on um, the interceptions? And what were the what were the 
the situations there last year when you when you said you were looking at, at film or tape with with Hunter over the off season? Yeah, I'll, uh, well, the, your first question. I mean, it's it's a uh, you know when when turnovers happen, um, you know it's 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 obviously it's bigger than just that turnover. It's it's uh, there there's, can be a number of different reasons from you know accuracy to timing to decision making, and, and so um, I think with each of them, you, you gotta you know really zoom into that specific. Uh, situation of what happened and, and figure that out. But but again, we, we talk a lot less about, um, you know, maybe a, avoiding interceptions and more about making great decisions. And, and I think that's that's the bigger part that, that we continue to focus on in that room um, is, is being great decision makers. And, and yeah, that's that's when you throw the ball. Uh, but there's also decisions that got to be made in the run game and, and what they do there as well. And so that, that's all a factor to um, our execution on offense. And then um, you know, when you talk about situations, uh, football is is broken up into a number of different things. You, you, you've got your um, man. You, you take the field and you have you know your drive starter, which there's always a, a way of processing that and thinking about that. Um, man, you get into second down, and uh, you know there's a number of different types of second downs. You got second and short, and what that could mean um, versus specific defense. You got second and medium, second and long, and, and those are all going to mean different things. And, and you know you're going to call different plays based on that. And then you know the same goes for third down. You, you cross a certain yard marker as you get into the red zone, and, and the thought process changes as an offense. Man, you're backed up and you're coming out, and you get a defense that's going to have a, a, a certain you know, uh, mentality down there. And so the, all of those things, like that, that's why I talk about coaching the quarterbacks. Y you got to talk through and you got to process through all those things because you can call a play. Uh, man, you call a quick game play on, you know, third and long, you could have a totally different mentality than we're calling that play on first and 10. It could be the same exact play, but the mentality of what you're thinking in, in, in that situation could be totally different. So um, those, I guess, are the parts that, that we've been able to uncover a little bit more and, and, and talk through. And, and again, you can, you can meet with the quarterback from now until the season and, and feel like you still got more stuff to talk about when it comes to situational football.